Heavenly Father, once again today we thank you. We give you all of the glory, Lord. Thank you for answered prayers. Thank you for listening to us today. Commit the service again into your hand. That, Lord, the things we will say, Heavenly Father, let them be your words, Lord. Thank you for everything you've done so far. We are surely excited about our future. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I stopped last week sharing with us about the transition. It's okay. Thank you. How about the transition that the church is in? And um, we shared last week about, we looked at a specific transition that happened in the Bible that we can learn from since the Bible is written as examples for us. And so we look at the story of Elijah and um, Elisha. How in the midst of everything that the Lord told him that he should go and pick his replacement. And one of the things we found out that his replacement was not what we would have thought would be his replacement. Because they were the sons of the prophets. And God did not choose from the sons of the prophets to take over from him. God chose an unlikely person who was a successful businessman who was Elijah, Elisha. And we found out that he told him that Elisha was going to take over from him. It's not the best for God to tell you why you are alive and very well that God tells you it's time for you to move on because that's what God basically said to Elisha gave him specific instructions and he obeyed the instruction the instruction would not have made so much sense to the sons of the prophets they must have thought that why are you not choosing one of us but the way man sees it is not the way God sees it God does things because of the end of a thing because he can see the end from the beginning which is what makes him the alpha and the omega and so God chose an unlikely individual, and he chose Elijah. Elijah. And I shared with us last week that we know that Elijah was a very hairy man, because that's what the servant told the king when he asked them, who told you that I'm going to die? And then we found out that when God chose Elisha, Elisha was a bald a dead man and so at times the pattern we might think with god is not a pattern with him he chooses because of his own ultimate goal and so god is multi-dimensional in his things god is omnipotent he's all powerful his omniscience is all-knowing and so it doesn't have to follow a pattern and so I said last week that myself and Pastor Lumide, we are two different individuals. And so the person who will take over for me doesn't have to be like me. I'm a preacher, like I said last week. He's a teacher. I'm a little bit on the brash side. He's a little bit of a gentleman. And so he doesn't have to follow a pattern. Because a lot of times when we look at patterns, we might miss God. It's not that God doesn't work with patterns, but God is God and God by himself. He does what he thinks is always the best. And at times what he does is the unusual. I've shared in this church several times that when you look at the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ, it doesn't make sense. It does not make any sense. A man who had come to evangelize the world, share a new message with the people, Yet, he picked more of fishermen. And when you look at the initial people that he picked, an individual who is watching it can really be confused. 
confused in the sense that is this man starting a fishing business? Because the people he's speaking are fishermen. And then he picked people like Matthew, who are publicans. He picked people who, was, who is like Judas, who steals, and all of those things. You, you know, when you look at the compendium of what he put together, it doesn't look like it makes sense. But he knew what he was doing. They said none of his disciples was a mistake. Even Judas was not a mistake. And so it might not look like what you see it, because you are not God. He, he, he is, and he is the only God. He's the only one who knows what he wants to do. Yet, he picked unlikely people. He picked brothers. So when you see him pick brothers, then you're saying, I think this is the family business. When you see him pick fishermen, I think this man wants to start a fishing business. You see him picking public, and you say, what's wrong with this man? He's picking corrupt people. But God knew exactly why he picked those people. He left the gospel with 11 of them. And those 11 people, they changed the world. Amen? Please, let's clap for King God. Let's clap for the King God. Amen. So a lot of times, it doesn't look like it's supposed to be. I told, that, that I told you last week that I'm just an average individual academically. But what I didn't learn in class, I learned in the district anyway. Amen. At least I learned somewhere. <laughs> Pastor Lubide is very cerebral. You know, he has a PhD. He has a doctorate degree. I try to have a master's, but at least yeah. I tried. Amen. And so the way he processes things might not be the way I will process things. Because the people who are cerebral, the way they see things is a little bit different from those who are not that cerebral. Maybe that's why I'm brash. Amen. But the people who are cerebral, they put it through a system of thinking. And like I said to us, I'm not... Holy Day is not stepping into my shoes. I'm taking my shoes with him. He's coming with his own shoes. And he's going to wear his own shoes. He's going to do his own style. That's what he's going to do. And of course, I ended by talking. No, I didn't end up. But I also said to us about the great Elijah. That when the, the Elijah who had been, nobody has seen anything in, in the prophetic world like him before. He came and he said, there will not be any rain by my name. <laughs> and there was no rain. The way he said it is that he, he took the key of heaven and locked up the skies and put it in his pocket and went away for seven years. And then he came and said, let there be rain. And rain surely came. So when you see a person like that, you'll be wondering, why will God say your time has expired? The guy did an amazing thing. All the prophets of Baal, he alone faced them, showed them what we call Pepe. But what happened? God said his time was up. And so the ovation might be loud with men. It doesn't mean that the ovation is loud with God. God just wants to do what he wants to do. And so a lot of the times we might not we miss seasons of God. Because we expect it to be in a particular way. But the seasons of God is his own season. And we shared with us last week in the book of Genesis chapter 1. is when he said one thing, there will be seasons. So there will be, that means that times will always do one thing, change. Times will always change. And what is most important is for everybody to know when the time has changed. Because it's terrible for you to be operating in the time and the season that God has left. And that is a very frustrating thing. So it's never about me. It's never about Omar. It's never about the children. It's always about God. And that's what I believe that God has always done with us. And that's where we are, where we are as a church. And so I ended last week by talking about the second transition we could see in the Bible is the transition of Moses and Joshua. Or oh, don't let me say it's the second, another transition because that one came before Elisha and Elijah. But another transition we can see in the Bible is the, is the transition of Moses <laughs> to Joshua. So transition is not anything new. It has been there from the beginning. 
that God makes transitions to happen. And so I shared with us from the book of Joshua chapter 1. So let's look at Joshua chapter 1. So I'm just leaving the background to where I'm going for those who are not here last week so that we can catch up where we are. So this is after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord. It came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. You know, this statement looks like a statement of God not being sensitive. It shows us, why, why would you just say that? A man who devoted his life to you, a man who served you, a man you called, a man that you are allowed to take the children of Israel through 40 years of wilderness. Why are you talking as if you are excited that he's dead? If you look at that statement, you say, Joshua, guess what? Moses, my servant, is dead. So, I think we have to move on. We are not even lamenting about it. This is not a statement that would have gotten excitement from Moses. If he was there, he would say, God, why are you talking like that? Why are you saying as if you are happy that I'm dead? But God knows exactly what he's doing. So he said to him that Moses, my servant, is dead. That statement looks like an insensitive statement. But Moses, my servant, is dead means a new order has come. The order of Moses is over. The time and season of Moses is over. He said the old ways of doing things are over. It's behold, I'm going to do a new thing. That's what he's saying there. He says the deliverance of the people from Egypt is over. Because now they're going into a new order. Moses was able to bring them in. But he's not the one who will take them. He was able to bring them out. But he's not the one who is going to take them in. He's saying that the, then you will ask yourself, what about all the miracles that he did? God said something. He says, now therefore arise, go over Jordan and all these people of the land to which I'm giving to them. The children of Israel, continue, please. Every place that is sold of your field, continue. From the wilderness of days and all of those things, continue. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. And then the next thing he said is that, as I was with what? Moses. The Red Sea parting, it was not Moses, it was me. It wasn't Moses, I did it. It was because I was with Moses. Hence, he was able to do what he did. Saying the same thing to Pastor Lubide today. I'm standing in the position of Moses. That I am moving away. But as the Lord was with me, he will be with you, Olumide. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is it. That's what God is saying here. He's saying, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. And as God has said, that I will not leave you nor forsake you. He's saying the same thing to you, Pastor Lumide. That he will not leave you, he will not forsake you. While I was there for 28 years, he never left me. He was with me. And so everything we've done in 28 years has been because he was with me. And I said the same thing to you, he will be with you. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, he will be with you. All the miracles that were done, he did it. All the land that we covered, he did it. So he was saying to him, the Red Sea that parted, I did it. And Moses, who was running for his life, can he part the Red Sea? The brazen serpent. He might have put the brazen serpent together, but I gave him the instructions. I told him what he needed to do. So whatever I have done in this church is because the Lord was with me. And I say, as he was with me, he will be with you. Yeah. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The bitter waters that turned sweet. It wasn't Moses. <laughs> I did it. So all the things, the prayers that have been answered in this church, it wasn't me. It was God who answered the prayer. I have prayers that God has not even answered. So all the prayers that anyone who is a member of this church that has been answered, it is God that did it. It was never about Gandhi. It's always about him. 
And that's why we are always careful to say we got this far by one person, by God. The, what could we do? Do I even know what will happen tomorrow? I don't know what will happen tomorrow. But he did everything that we have achieved. The people who rose up against him, is, they were swallowed up. They died in our mad graves. Could that have been Moses? He said, no, it wasn't Moses. I'm the one, the heaven and the heart, I created them. And the one who made the heart to open and swallow up the people. Same thing has happened to me. The people who have ganged up against me and everything, the land opened, swallowed them up. We don't know them. I don't even know them. He, he, he didn't even allow me to know them. It's not me that did it. It's he that did it on my behalf. So God said, Moses is dead. And it's not a death in the physical again. It's saying that the season of Moses is over. That's what he's saying. So he's saying to him, Joshua, it's your season. I say the same thing, Olumide, it's your season. Amen. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It's the same thing, it's your season. It's for you to arise and take the people to the promised land. Is, that is it. It says, arise. Arise from fear. Arise from trepidation. Arise from lack of motivation. Arise from weeping for Moses. Because Moses has gone to do his own thing. Is it not, is it not interesting that when you look at the story of Elijah and you look at the story of Moses, that in what looked like the time of their success was the time God said is over for them. When you look at it, you might say, oh God, why does God do things like this? But God do things not because of the present, but because of the future. But if you continue to read the Bible, you will find out that Elijah and Moses, they showed up with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You'll get that one on Tuesday. So what looks like an end for them in an earthly way was a glory for them. Oh my God. It was a glory for them in the future. That was it. The Bible tells us that when they were seen at the Mount of Transfiguration, the way they looked was not that the way they looked when they departed. I said the same thing, that the kind of grace will come upon my life also. That what I look today, who I am today, will be more glorious in the future. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what I believe. And that's what I know. That God, what God does is that he promotes us. He keeps getting better for the child of God. And I'm a child of God. He says, arise from confusion. Rise, take the leadership. Arise and possess the promises of God. That's what the Lord told Joshua. Put it, put it back on the screen. Verse 8. Then he gave what is going to help him. That if you do this, this is the success of Moses. That if you do this, this is what will happen. Then he told him, he said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You will meditate on it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. I said the same thing to you, Olumide. That this book, if a man uses <laughs> the guidance of the word of God, because forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled. God, in his infinite wisdom, has put together this compendium of books so that it will be a guidance for us. If we follow it, it will work for us. Amen. I'm going to say that again. If we follow it, it will work for us. Amen. It's not that I think, I know. It will work for us. And many, many times, even me, I can confess here, it is not every time I follow it. But when I follow it, it works. That's just a thing. Because the flesh doesn't want us to follow it because the flesh knows that it works. So our mind, our, a lot of things, it confuses us. And because God doesn't figure out things the way we figure it out. 
Hence, it's difficult for us at times to, to follow. But if we follow it, it will work for us. It might not look like it makes sense in the beginning, but in years to come, when we have looked back at 2020 vision, we will find out that God is what works all the time. He works all the time. Many people truncate their life's destiny because they have refused the word of God. They truncate their lives. They truncate what God's best is for them. For them. They figure it out in their own ways. And I always say that when you can figure out your life, then you don't need God. That's it. When you can't figure it out, that's when you need him. So don't say you love God and you're trying to figure it out. Believe in God. God doesn't make mistakes. I'm telling you, it looks like mistake to you. It's God's best for you. When you look back, you will find that one out. Joshua chapter 3. That's of time. I'm preaching a little bit long today. When you're tired, carry your bag of Bible. Leave. <laughs> but that which I have to say, I'm going to say it today. Joshua chapter 3. I'm serious. I'm not joking. That's not a joke. It's a fact. Joshua chapter 3 verse 5. And Joshua said to the people, sanctify yourself. For tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. I pray on the members of this church that God will do wonders among you. Yeah. Tomorrow means the future. That's what tomorrow means. It means the future. God will do great things among you yeah. in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. He yeah. will bless you in every area in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to what it says. Verse, continue. And Joshua spoke to the priest saying, take the hack of the covenant. No, no go, 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 go to verse Three, I think. Three. All right, two. Let me see two. Uh, go to verse one. All right. There's something now. Verse seven. Let me see verse seven. And the Lord said to Joshua, and I believe that the Lord is speaking to you, Pastor Olimide. The Lord said to Joshua, this day I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of the people, that they may know that I, as I was with Gandhi, so I will be with you. That's what he's saying there. And you could see how God is doing his transition. That's it. We could see because there's a model for us that all that Gandhi has done, he wasn't the one. He's, Gandhi's a big mess up. But he's saying that the way I was with him, I will be with you. That's what he's saying. And listen to what he And the Lord said, This day I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all, the, of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. And I pray that the Lord will be with you. In this next stage of Jesus' house, the Lord will be with you. The Lord will be with you. He will help you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what he will do. And then, look at verse 13. God gave an instruction. Like God will always give instruction. As we're going on in the years to come, he will always give instruction. But let us always know that God's instruction will not make sense to everybody. It's not going to make sense. And it's for us as a pastor and as the leader to know that it might not make sense. But if God speaks, so it is. Once have you spoken, twice have I heard. That's what it must always be. Master, speak for the servant here. That's what it must be. It's never about you, it's about him. But that song says it's about you, Yeshua. It's always about him. Because a man tries to figure out what he does not know. How can you figure out where you do not even know tomorrow? That's it. Then it shall come to pass as soon as the souls of the, seat, of the feet of the priests who bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off, the waters that come down from the upstream, and they shall stand as a heap. The question is, what are you talking about, God? What are you talking about? I shared this towards the end of someone last week. These children of Israel, 
when they departed Egypt, they got to the Red Sea. What happened at the Red Sea was that Moses raised up his rod and the, the sea parted. That's how the Red Sea parted. But this is 40 years they have been with him. Now they have gotten to another river. Everybody must be looking towards Joshua. That now they say you have replaced Moses. So lift up whatever you have. Let this river, let it part. That's what they must have been thinking. Because when they left Egypt, that's exactly what happened. But that was Moses. This is now Joshua. And God is God. We must always get to the place where we know that God is God and is God by himself. He does not do committee meeting before he takes his decision. Who does God consult? Who can God consult? Who can? Who is his advisor? So he got to this place. He said to them, this is the instruction. You must step into this river. So if the people who were there said, I cannot trust Joshua. <laughs> because Moses never asked us to step into the Red Sea. He never told us that. Does this man know what he's doing? <laughs> Me, I'm not. Who. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. God will not ask us to step into the river. It is not going to do such a thing. Because it would not make sense to us. You, maybe some of us will know this story. You know, the, the reason why this story is significant, and I mean very significant, is because the Bible says the time when they were going to step into this river, it has what? Overflowed its banks. It was a time of the flood that God has asked them to cross this river. So he has overflowed his bank. The bank of the river lets us know where the river ends. That's what it does for us. But now it has overflowed its bank. Let's say this is the bank. It has overflowed the banks. So when we are stepping into it, we do not even know where the fall is going to be. Which is a very dangerous thing. But that's when God told them, you've got to cross this river. He waited to the time when the river overflowed his bank. And then, this new kid on the block is asking them to do what looks like insanity. To cross this river when this river has overflowed his bank. Me, I'm not going to commit arachiri. That's suicide. I'm not going to do that. Many people miss the seasons of God because they feel they know God. They feel their advisor to God. They miss it. But let me tell you this. Heaven is never going to stop because somebody has an attitude. God is going to do what he has planned to do. Period. So, what happens? The Bible tells us, because God has said one thing, I'm going to magnify you in the sight of the people. And after he said that, the next thing he said, the book of the law, which is God's instructions, don't let it <laughs> depart from your mouth. You will ponder, meditate, search, ruminate on it continuously. He says, after you've done this, one thing is guaranteed, success. That's what he said. So the Lord told them, what you're going to do is you're going to cross this river. But the way you're going to cross this river, it's going to be by faith. This church, I'm telling you, you are going to go forward by faith. Yeah. I'm telling you, you are going to go forward by believing God. The time of the wilderness, <laughs> it's over. You know, let me tell you this. The wilderness, every time we think about the wilderness, we think about it as always a terrible thing. But the wilderness for the children of Israel was not really a terrible thing. Why do I say that? 
they never needed to cook. They never needed to cook. Do you know that? God fed them. They woke up. All they need to do was to go out and do one thing and just pick food. That's all they needed to do. Manna was raining for them. The Bible says that he gave them what their fathers and their ancestors never got. God gave it to them in the wilderness. <laughs> Abraham, the father of faith, the father of Israel, he had to walk. But the children of Israel in the wilderness, they didn't need to walk. God provided for them. They got to the bitter water of Mara. God turned the water for them. They got whatever they needed, they got. They said they were tired of manna. God gave them quail. God provided for them. The Bible says that their clothes, they didn't need to go to Kmart or JCPenney or Mrs. Their clothes were changed miraculously. They experienced everyday miracle. That wasn't all. The Bible tells us there was a pillar of fire for them. There was a cloud that was there. So they experienced the presence of God on a daily basis. Everyday miracle they experienced in the wilderness. That's what they experienced. Of course, did they have issues with the scorpions biting them? Or the, the serpent biting them? Yes, they had. But that happened because of their own disobedience. But even with all of that, they got the panacea for it. God solved the problem for them in the wilderness. Ah, when you think about it, they had whatever they wanted. The presence of God was always there. They never needed an electricity board. They didn't need that. The fire was there to give them light at night. So the wilderness was not a terrible experience for them. So I believe that even we as a church, we have enjoyed everyday miracle in the past 28 years. We have. I'm the pastor of this church. I started it from, from the beginning. I know exactly what I'm saying. I've seen God answer his prayers just by me thinking about it, not even praying. So there has been everyday miracle, everyday success, and a lot of these, those things. We paid off this building and that building in five years. I was sharing this with the night. They said they are seven years. I said in five years we, we paid all of this. This church has been debt free for the past 23 years of the church. So what I would say, so what I mean is that we have enjoyed, it looked like a wilderness experience. But God has helped this church tremendously. The next stage, <laughs> you know, people say, oh, Gandhi, the church is coasting. That you are living, uh, when you look at it with the human eye, it's coasting. But the next stage of this church is have to live by faith. Because when the children of Israel, after they crossed that river Jordan, all those things that were in the wilderness did what? Stopped. They needed to till the ground for them to eat. They needed to farm. They needed to do a whole lot of things for them to be able to. So it's not costing like that. It was a time of knowing that things are going to change. That's the thing. But will God's faithfulness, and that's why I say the next stage is living by what? By faith. You've got to believe God for a lot of things. We have a campus. We were all there um, about two or three days ago. Work has started. They're going to show, show us um, on Sunday. <laughs> that thing. Trust me, you need Fato. You, you know, when you go there now, you will understand. You know, some of us were there, Pastor Lumbe, some of us were there. When we saw the land that has been cleared, <laughs> you need faith to build that structure. It, this one, we went to bank. We said we needed two million. They gave us two point two, point two million. Uh, that's a, uh, could that have been my prayer? This was wilderness experience. We had God miraculously continue to produce for us. <laughs> the next stage. So if you use the high of Moses for Joshua, you are going to miss the season of the Lord. You're going to miss it. Ah, but Pascal did this, Pascal. If you do that, that's wilderness experience. When manna came, <laughs> we had the presence of God was always there for them. 
They didn't need the electricity board. They had lights by its presence. Water came out of the rock. No need for water corporation. But that's what's going to change. Because now, when you are in your own land, things change. Every one of them was looking to a land of El Dorado, a land that was flowing with milk and honey. They were looking forward to it. But when they got to the land that was flowing with milk and honey, they knew they needed to till the ground. So we've had a wonderful time. But it's important for this church to understand that we are going into a new season. This new season is what we call the Joshua generation. <laughs> That's it. Joshua, because of time, Joshua did not just show up. Joshua didn't show up, just show up, and Moses, no. It was, his, his whole story was not like Elisha. Joshua had been with Moses from the beginning. When he went on Mount Sinai, Joshua was there with him. When they sent people to go and spy the land, Joshua was one of the 12 that went. So Joshua just didn't show up. So that's why I said that you can't put God in a box. Joshua had always been there with Moses. Hence he was, he was, he was chosen. Pastor Lumide has been my assistant for 22 years. He just didn't show up on the block. He's, if you want to clap, please clap. And the reason why that is significant is that <laughs> I'm not the easiest to work with. That's the truth. So for somebody to survive me for 22 years, <laughs> the person has tried. No, it's a fact. It's a fact. So it only be they just didn't show up. It's not because he has a PhD. It's not because he's giving me money. It's not because of anything. Apart from the Lord saying to me, it is him that you take over from me. I called him and I told him that this is what the Lord is saying to me. It was yesterday he was reminding me that it took five months for him to come back to me. I thought it was shorter. So I just didn't, I told him this is what the Lord is saying to me. Then he said he would go and pray about it and get back to me. So it's not that he was waiting and he grabbed it. You know how he said, eh, eh, oh, I'm ready now. <laughs> just anoint my head, let it be now. <laughs> Just he was telling me that it was five months before he came back to tell me he was ready and that the Lord has released him. <laughs> Don't let us forget, Aaron was there. <laughs> Aaron was there <laughs> when Joshua was chosen. In actual fact, when Moses was going to start, start out, the, the Lord told him, Don't worry, I will give you Aaron. Aaron was more respected, brothers and sisters. Aaron was what not only well respected, Aaron was part of his blood. Aaron was part of his blood. He could have given it to Aaron. But God doesn't work like that. God works because he sees tomorrow. He takes decision today because of tomorrow. That's it. Some people could have said, I said that to the minister this morning, that we don't want this to happen. I'm from Paul, I'm for Apollos. Ah, we've never had that kind of thing. And God forbid you will not be establishing this church in any way in the mighty name. So there will not be any faction in this church. Everybody is going to line up behind Pastor Lumide. Period. And if you don't want to line up be, be, uh, behind him, Please, like I said to the workers the other day, don't be here and be criticizing him. Find another church down the road. No, sincerely, because let me tell you this. I experienced the vision earlier this year. Something happened to my eyes. And this left eye was seeing something. This right eye was seeing something. 
I've shared this with people. That's when I understood what division is. I couldn't walk. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm sure the, the, the lady who treats me, she's here. She understands what I'm saying. I couldn't walk. <laughs> because when I want to walk, one eye is saying it's at this, at this level, another one is saying it's at this level. That's it. I understood when they say division. That is, division means two vision. Because die means two. I understood it. So now I'm even more passionate that in whatever I'm doing, there must not be division. Because you know what? When the, because of the two, I couldn't walk. <laughs> so I have to close one to be able to walk. It's amazing what God has done. That two eyes, they see the same thing. I don't know how that thing happens. Two eyes, they see the same thing. That means we can also be different, but we can decide to see the same thing. That's it. And that's what I, I found out about division. Division does not make anything have progress. We can't afford division. Nobody must say, I'm for this person. Uh -uh. For Jesus' help, we establish this covenant upon this church. That this church will never, let's all rise up, this church will never express the vision of the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. One vision, that's what this church is built upon, and so shall it be in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. There will never be one person is for this, one person is for that. One vision is what this church will experience. We got here by one vision. That's it. People who didn't like me, people who like me, they all lined up behind me. That's why we are able to get here. And so shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. Pastor Lumide is the set man of this church. He's the one God has called. That's it. It's not anything. No, there's no go back on that. Let everybody, let's support him. So that this church can achieve his destiny. One thing I always say many years ago, please be seated. I've not finished. I'm just halfway through. I'm just halfway through. I gave a disclaimer. If you are tired, you can go. But for as many that remain here, I will finish what I have to say in my heart. Period. One of the things we always say is this. If you drive on 16th Street in D.C., you will see a lot of churches. They are monuments. We have said this church will never be that. Amen. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it is not boasting. It is this John 1, yeah, Joshua 1, 8. This book of the Lord must not depart from this church. Amen. Not individually alone, not from this church. We must not do things because of any agenda. We must do it because of God's agenda. Amen. That must be the reason that must propel us. Pastor Lumide is standing, in, is here in front of me, is hearing what I'm saying. He must never run this church with, because of any agenda. The agenda must always be the agenda of God. Period. The ministers who have been with me knows. I can do all my foolery, but when it has to do with God's thing, it has to be God's thing. It has to be God's way. That's it. It's never about Gandhi. It's about him. It's about him. And I don't bring my foolishness and my stupidity into God's work. When it has to be God's work, I am focused about it. I am telling you it's not being boastful. That's why I have 40 something ministers. We don't quarrel. Not because they are afraid of me. Not, they don't have to be in this church. There could be 8,001 churches. That's where they could be. But when it has to do with God, we focus upon God. We line up behind God. This is not a social club. This is not a family church. No, it's not. It's not a family church. It's not a social club. It is God's church. And so it will be till the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have named this church not Gandhi's house. We have named it what? Jesus' house. So shall it be till the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So let that one be settled in our heart. Let that be settled. <clears throat> Like I said, God didn't give it to Aaron. Didn't give it to Miriam. He gave it to Joshua. Numbers 27, verse 18. 
He says, take Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom the spirit of the Lord. Let's read that. Numbers 27. A man in whom is the spirit, lay your hands on him. That's what they come. That's what he said. He said, lay your hands on him. No, 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 I'm still preaching. I just want to do the significant thing here. So the Lord said to Moses, take the Joshua, the son of Nun, with you, a man whom the spirit of the Lord is, and lay your hands on him. God's grace will be available even for you to do that which you cannot naturally do. Amen. Father, Lord, let your spirit Amen. rest upon your son, Amen. even now, Amen. for the work that is ahead. Amen. Great grace, Amen. let it rest upon you. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. He said that. He said, do that. On whom the spirit of the Lord and lay your hand on him. And so he said something also, which is what I shared earlier on. He said they will start to magnify. And I pray that God will do that Amen. even for him. Amen. If we look at verse 15, I've talked about it. But, you know, I feel God is saying that not everybody knows this story. He says, and those who bore the hand came to Jordan, Jordan and the feet of the priest who bore the ark deep at the edge of the river. Look at what they did. In the ark was the word of God. That was what is in the ark. And of course, like they said, Aaron's, uh, Aaron's rod that bore it and manna. But the significant thing about the ark is that that's where the word of God is. Look at the principle. And the feet of the priest who bore the ark deep at the edge of the water. For Jordan overflows his bank during the whole time of the harvest. So it tells us something if we got deeper into this. In what looks scary and fearful. Because flood is an uncontrolled water. It's a vicious running water. That's what the flood is. God did not do what he did in Psalm 23, that he leaded me beside the still water. He waited for the time when the water was with debris, with running wild, and all of those things. That's when God waited for them to cross the water. But the confidence that they had and the confidence God wanted to give to them was what he was written here. The people who carried the word of God, they were the ones who had the faith to step into it first. As we go forward as a church, <laughs> what will separate the boys from the men is ability to believe in the word of God. To trust his word in spite of. In spite of. Of what you are seeing. Because what, don't forget, I told you, this church will have to move on by faith. But two things, amongst many things, affects people's faith. <laughs> Which is what is said to us in the book of Hebrews. They say, Abraham did not consider the deadness of his body or that of his wife. What you can see and what you feel are two things that kills faith. What those people could see is a flooded water, a wild water. That's what they could see. But in spite of what they could see, God told them, go forward. But how did they go forward? Look at it. Those who bore the heart came to Jordan, and the feet of the priests who bore the heart deep at the edge of the water. 
though at that time Jordan overflows his bank. The line of delineation was not known. It was blurry, unclear. But they dared to do that. Continue. During the whole time of harvest, we're going to continue it, so leave it there. Inside the tumultuous water, the raging river, the unclear water, dirty water, was harvest. You get that on Wednesday. Is it not amazing that what we want <laughs> is in the middle of what looks confusing, what looks scary, what we are looking for, the harvest we are expecting, is what is eating inside of what looks scary. I feel like shouting. That's it. The harvest was inside of the flood. The enemy scares us with what we can see, but inside of it is what we are looking for. This is why we must understand the seasons of the Lord. Because when we don't understand the seasons, we are scared out of the season. But God expects you to use faith and use trust, says the Lord. It's his word that is forever settled, not the word of man. Let every man be a liar. Let God be true. So what he says is what he will do. God doesn't dangle carrot before us. God tells us what he will do. And he does what he has said he will do. So look at the thing. They said the banks done it the whole time of harvest. Continue. And the waters which came down from upstream. They said they stood still. And rose in a heap, very far away of Adam, the city that is beside Zeratan. So that the waters that went down into the sea of Araba, the salt sea, failed and were cut off. And the people crossed over opposite Jericho. Jericho <laughs> was the first city of the land that is flowing with me, Canaanite. It was the first city of the promise of God. But now there was the water of Jordan between what is God's blessings and where they are. Jordan represents that. But they needed to cross Jordan for them to inherit what God has promised them. That's it. They needed to cross Jordan. Now Jordan has overflowed these banks. It was a flood. It was a wild water. It was a scary situation. I don't know who I'm speaking to today, who you feel that you have a promise of God, but there are things that are standing in between you. You're in the right place this morning for you to understand how to solve that problem. Look at what they did. They believed God in spite of what they can see. Don't doubt what God has said to you in spite of what you can see. Don't doubt God in spite of what you can feel. Believe his word, and you will see it established in your heart. You will see it come to pass in your life. That's what God promised them, and that's exactly what happened. The people, they thought that by the time they dip in their feet, the water will be cut off, because that's what the Lord promised them. He says, when they dip your, your something, the water will be cut off. That's what he told them. So they dip their feet inside of it. They kept going down inside of it. They kept going down inside of it. But guess what? The water did not cut off. The water did not cut off where they were. But the water had cut off 27 miles away. So what was flowing was the 27 miles of water. You know, because once you dam the water, let's assume that this is a river. When you dam the river here, this water stops. The Bible says it formed a heap. But the one that has been cut off will still continue to flow. And because it's 27 miles away, you would think that the water has not been cut off. But look at what the Bible says. Go back 
go back to the next verse. They said that the waters which came down from upstream stood still and rose in a heap. What did the Bible say? Very far away. They couldn't see it. But God's what had happened. A lot of the times we have victorious Sunday, we pray. And at times you don't see the result immediately. You are saying maybe God didn't answer it. But God has answered it in a very far away place that you can see it. And the fact that you can see it does not mean that God's word has not been established. It doesn't mean that God has not answered the prayer. It doesn't mean that God is a liar. It doesn't mean he has not done what he said he would do. But where it got cut off, their eyes could not see it. But though their eyes could not see it, the people, because they had the word of God, they kept going. They were not scared. They kept going. They kept going. Listen to what the Bible says. Go on to verse 17. It was cut off. All right. And the priest who bought the hack of the stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan and all Israel crossed over on the dry land because after some time the 27 miles of water that was flowing will flow past because the other part has been what damped it has rose like a heap so if only we keep our faith in spite of what we feel in spite of what we see no matter what we feel, we keep going. Because why? The word of God has told us, keep going. It doesn't matter what you feel. It doesn't matter what you see. Don't say, but this thing is still persistent. He has answered the prayer. Yes. I don't know who I've come to speak to today. Who you feel that nothing is happening, you've been praying. I have good news for you. God has what? answered the prayer I said God has answered the prayer the fact that you don't see the signs does not mean he has not answered the prayer today is victorious Sunday God is one who gave us this day to, to, to pray and seek his face specially the prayers we ask today we must believe it we can afford us to give up by what we can see when we go to a restaurant I've shared this story before but not everybody's always here a, a, a young boy went to the restaurant and his father told him that this restaurant we are going is a little bit different of a restaurant. Of course, the boy was excited. When they got to the restaurant, this boy was looking for what he was familiar with. What he was familiar with is what I call the Mama Put restaurant. Mama Put restaurant is a restaurant that when you get there, you will see, most of the time they're a little bit on the fat side, or on the big side. They say we shouldn't say fat, but on the big side. <laughs> she was a little bit on the big side. You, she will sit down, and then you will see this big bowl of assorted meat, roundabout, um, uh, simple 16 intestine, towel, uh, intestine, uh, the tongue, and all manners of meat represented in that bowl. <laughs> the kidney, the liver, the tongue, the tail. And most of the time, it's on, on wood, and uh, the bowl is just doing chok, 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 chok. I'm sure you have visited that place, so you have an idea of what I'm saying. <laughs> anyway, the, the the woman sits there and uh, with that when you want to pick you pick by seeing it so it's you know not that the one uh, uh, that, uh, uh, that one uh, then they turn it around uh, no 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 uh, uh, that one <laughs> the choice is made by one thing it's made by what sight made by sight made by seeing that's how you do that that's exactly how you do it, by sight. Now, this boy gets into this restaurant. He's looking for that woman. He's thinking that my dad is playing a trick on me. 
He said, we have to, be, we have to wait to be seated. How long the wait is going to be, we don't know, but you have to wait to be seated. Then you wait to be seated. The next thing is that they, they bring this, what they call men. And then you are thinking, the boy is thinking, that I thought you said we are here to eat. Now they are giving me a book to read. It becomes more confusing when you read those things. Chicken condom blue. <laughs> Potato moussaka. You ask yourself, Daddy, I don't, I don't understand French and all of these things you are saying here. The dad is saying, calm down, calm down, calm down. And after some time, he reluctantly, the father said, don't worry. I, I really am going to help you put He said, no, I let me pick myself. He said, how do I pick? So the child look at a name that sounds... Uh, a uh, very nice uh, potato bolognese. <laughs> At least he knows what potato is. He picked that one. And then they said, all right, no problem. He's still wondering whether they are going to go into another room where he's going to see that woman. And then the boy learned a story I want all of us to learn. You don't need to know the chef. You don't need to. You don't need to know the cook. You've got to believe that's what the father told the boy. You've got to believe that what you order is what the chef and the cook you cannot see. That's what he will bring to you. A lot of times, we do not believe that what we order is what God will bring to us. Because we want to see it. We want to pick it. But God says, I know. All you need is, you make your order. Trust me that I will do one thing for you. I will bring that which you have ordered, and I will bring it in the best way for you. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The next stage of this church, brothers and sisters, is the place of faith. The next stage, what you need is faith. You have to believe God that whatever you order is what God will bring. That is so important. You've got to believe. So as I leave, I want you to know that like they say, we are living behind a strong church. But we are believing in God for a stronger church. That's what we're believing in him for. I'm not disappearing. It's just that I'm not going to be the pastor of the church again. This will always be my church. Anytime I'm in the area. And like I said, Omo and the children are still going to be around his place. So I will, um, I will visit. I will have no role in the administration of this church. What I'm going to do, if I'm called to advise, I will always advise. If my help is needed, I will always be there. But Pastor Lumide is 100% in charge of every decision making of this church. And if and when I visit, I will be under Pastor Lumide because I will not be the pastor of this church. Nothing is going to have two heads that will survive. It's a monster that has two heads. And this church is not going to be a monster. Today is the last day I'm preaching as the pastor of this church. But it might not be the last day I will preach in this church. If I come, if they allow me, I will preach. But that's, I'm, I'm being truthful, and that's it. You will understand that. If you give somebody a goat, you will leave the rope with it. You don't take the goat to somebody and say, I've given you this goat, and you hold on to the rope. Pastor Lumide, we restructure, we do whatever. He doesn't have to restructure, but whatever he feels. 
that will depend on him. But like I've said, and I hope I'm, I've been clear, it's a new season, it's a new time for this church. You cannot even believe how expected I, I, how expected I am for this church, for the next level. It's in my own selfish interest that this church does well for so many reasons. But because we are, we are a family. Because as long as this church does well, High Gandhi will do well. Uh, and maybe you don't understand. I will do well in terms of my, I'm not going away from this church empty handed at all. <laughs> I'm not. So please, don't pity me at all. You understand? No, no, I'm not, I'm not going empty handed. Uh -huh. so what I'm trying to say is that if this church is doing well, the pension or whatever I'm going to get will continue to be paid. If it's not doing well, <laughs> then there will be struggle. And, you know, the, the thing is that I grew up in Nigeria and I know that one of the first set of people that suffer from governors are pensioners. And since I'm going to be a pensioner, this church must continue to do well so that they can continue to pay me. Let's all rise up, amen. Let's rise to our feet. Let, I want to, I want to, please, ask God for something. That this new season that this church is going, let me be part of the new season. Let me experience something new myself. And so that the time of refreshing can also come. I want to bless. I want to bless. I want to bless. You know what you want for this new season. But as this new season, Lord, this is my expectation for the new season of this church. This is personal. You know what you want. I want to bless as a father of this church. That whatever you're believing in him for, that the Lord will do it for you. Amen. So why don't you ask God, what will, what, a, a, what will a time of refreshing, what will it look like for you? A time of refreshing, what will it look like for you? Describe it to God. You don't have to have the biblical jargon. Just speak to him as a father. That Lord, this is what a time of refreshing will look for for me. This is what he will look for for me. This is what he will look for for me. What is a new season? What will it look, for, look like for you? What will it look like for you? A new season of your life. What do you want? He told Abraham, look to the sky. He told him, look to the sun. So he can, he can be able to figure out how many his children were going to be uncountable. And it was like that it happened. I want to do the same for you today. I want to do the same for you today. What will it look like for you? Speak to your father. Heavenly Father, once again, I've asked this congregation, Lord, they are yours. I've asked them to ask something for you, for what a new season will be for them, the kind of new season they want to experience, which is what this church is going to experience. And also, Lord, for them to ask for what a time of refreshing will be, what it will look like for them. Lord, they have asked severally, and you know that which they have asked. Heavenly Father, as I depart as a pastor of this church, I pray that, Lord, please grant them this request. Amen. 
you have honored me in the past 28 years as a pastor of this church. Heavenly Father, that same honor I put upon this congregation, Lord, today. Amen. That, Lord, you will do one thing. You will grant unto them, Lord, Amen. that which they have asked of you. Amen. Lord, I pray that you will be with them Amen. in all that they will do. Amen. Lord, each and every one of them showcase them Amen. in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Let great grace, let it rest upon them. Amen. The ability to do the ability to achieve. Amen. The ability to be different. Amen. Lord, upon their forehead, I put the favor of yours. Amen. That, Lord, every eye that sees any of these people, those online, those who are in the sanctuary, that every eye that sees them will call them the blessed of the Lord. Amen. That people will go out of their way to do things for them. Amen. Lord, this year, as they move into this new season, let everything concerning them be really new for them. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, let not my word fall to the ground today, Lord. Lord, grant me this honor that nothing that I say unto this congregation today will fall to the ground. But let there be a performance of it. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let your grace rest upon it. We've spoken about harvest, Heavenly Father. Let them reap harvest. Amen. Let them reap harvest. Amen. Bountiful harvest, Heavenly Father. Let them. When we hear about ourselves, let it be of your goodness and your mercy. Amen. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Heavenly Father, I curse to his root anyone who has any form of sickness. Amen. I say, let that sickness dry up. Amen. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let there be testimony, Heavenly Father, upon every family that is represented in this place. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I declare wellness, wellness of the mind, wellness of the body, even upon this congregation. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, they will never die any other person's death. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, they will not walk in the day that the road is looking for accident. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Into your protection, Lord, we commit them. Amen. Let them enjoy your protection. Amen. Let them enjoy your God's, Amen. your grace Amen. in abundant measure. Amen. Let them expand to every direction. Amen. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Every one of them who is a parent, let them enjoy their children. Amen. Every one of them who have children, Heavenly Father, I pray that their children will take care of them in their Amen. old age. Everybody that is here, Lord, believing in you for a child, Lord, make a way for them. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever they are believing in you for, that is according to your will, Lord, do it for them. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you. We give you all of the glory. We have only come this far by you. And Lord, we know that all that we have spoken about, all that we have done in the past one year, it's just for the establishment of your kingdom here on earth to glorify your name, to set an example of what transition and a godly transition can be. And so, Lord, less signs and wonders, let it follow this transition. Confirm your word, Lord, that we have done the right thing with signs and wonders following it in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, like you said when you are departing this world, let them be one. Lord, let them be one. Amen. Let there not be a, dis a division Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let there not be a child of perdition amongst Amen. them in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Let no one sell their soul, Heavenly Father, for shekels of silver Amen. in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let them have one common purpose. Amen. Let them have one common will Amen. in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, help this church. Help Jesus' house, Heavenly Father. You have made this church to be a flagship. Flagship will it continue to be. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. It's a flagship in our community. It's a flagship in our, in our denomination. We'll say it will never go down. It will continue in leaps and in bounds. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I have done my, my Father, my God, as we hand this over to Pastor Lumide. We ask, Lord, that you will help him. Yeah. He needs you, Heavenly Father. Yeah. We stand upon your word that we share today. You said, as you were with Moses, so you will be with him. Yeah. 
let the same happen. Even, even for him. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Help him, Heavenly Father. Help this church, Heavenly Father. Lord, bring people, men and women, from all over. Let them come and help the work here. Let it expand. We commit, Heavenly Father, the new campus into your hand. Lord, we go by faith. We know you never order what you cannot pay for. You order this. You gave me this vision years ago that this is what will happen. My Father, my God, you gave Moses vision of the promised land, yet he did not get there. But my Father, my God, Joshua took them into the place. Olumide will take them into the new building, Lord. Yeah. But I will be there yeah. to see it, Heavenly Father, yeah. in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, help me also to support this work yeah. in any way, Heavenly Father, that is important, yeah. that you find necessary in whatever way, Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. To you alone be all of the glory. Yeah. We couldn't have come this far without you. But the confidence we have is that as we go forward, we will only go with you. Amen. And that your name alone will be glorified. Amen. In every situation, Lord, we will always lift up your name. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you.